This is our height sensor. We are setting up the front sensor on this vehicle. The sensor itself is indexable. The screw in the center, you simply undo. It's on a square and you index it to where you need it. To save space on this one, we have the plug at the back. We've indexed it so that it's now facing the rear at the middle of the travel. When the vehicle is down, the arm will be up here. And when the vehicle is up, it'll be the other way around. So we're around to setting up our rear height sensors. This is normally how the sensor arm would be mounted in a straight position. But we need it to mount up here so that we can connect the sensor up from underneath. So we simply unplug it. We have our square on here so that we can index it. And then we plug the arm facing in the direction of where we want to change our travel. So our midpoint of travel on this one is going to be the opposite way around. So we now put it up here and that now is our midpoint of travel. That will be all the way down and that will be all the way up. It's going to air out the vehicle and we're doing this so that we can find the position on our height sensors to set for our maximum travel when the vehicle is dropped. So what we're doing now is we're going to set the connection to the ECU up so that we're in sleep mode. What sleep mode allows you to do on the menu button, which is the little gear up on the top here, is you'll come down and you'll scroll down here and you'll see sleep mode on or off. So we click on on and anything you change, you must press save. And by doing that, that configuration is now part of your standard setup. You can then go back to here and then we can go and set up our height sensors and we don't now need to turn the key on or ignition on in order to pair the system. It'll pair now in sleep mode as long as you have 12 volt supply. Okay, so now that we've connected our ECU to the car, we've set it up in sleep mode, we've plugged in the height sensors, we can now go and check that they're all reading correctly. So you should do this for every corner. So what we're checking is the travel. We're looking at the front left where you see the high symbol and we're looking directly to the right of the word high. And as we move the arm, you can see that the sensor itself is moving. And when you set it up, you don't want to be beyond the end of the marker where it's red. You want it to be just, just under so it lines up and on the other end, you want your travel to be close there as well. And you can use the position on the suspension or the different holes on the arm to achieve this. But just remember that center point of your travel, 50% is in the middle. And you need to be at least 25% in either direction for it to calibrate. So what we're doing now is we're actually using the screen on the controller to enable us to set the travel on our sensor. So the vehicle is currently laid out we have our rod connected to our arm and on the screen, as you move the arm up and down, you can see it moving live on the screen. So we want to be in the upward position of travel. So I keep bringing the sensor up until I can see it stop moving and then I come back slightly. I then position the rod where it joins onto the sensor and I make a mark at the base of where it screws into with the marker and then I'm going to cut this to length and then screw it all together. So now we've cut our rod to the correct length. I've screwed the rod back together. I've put our extender in. The extender is to line up the sensor so that it's parallel with the arm. You don't want it to be in or out because this pivots not only around that way, but it pivots this way and that way. And you don't want any bind during the suspension travel. When you go to lift the vehicle, you're going to suspend the vehicle so that the wheels are off the ground but you want to disconnect off the arm first so you don't over travel the sensor and break, risk breaking the sensor before you actually get it set up. This is always the best way to do it. That way when the wheels are hanging, you can then try to reconnect the sensor and you can check on your screen whether you're still within the range of 50% travel or whether you've gone over the travel is required for the sensor to read. Okay, so now that you've set up all your height sensors and you have your travel sorted, we're going to change out the non-locking nuts, which are just, these are just used for setup so that it's easy to undo them and put them back on. And we're going to replace it with the nylock nut so that it doesn't come loose. All of the, the nuts and the bolts and everything are provided in the package already. Just remember to use 
the non-locking nuts for your setup so you don't wear out the nylocks. The nylocks are generally a one use only.